can't look in the eyes of my brother without shedding yo, a tear. Yo, 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 it's the one and the two. No. Uh, what up? <laughs> okay. Say. <laughs> Like, damn, do I have to freestyle now? <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, what up, everybody out there? Welcome back to another episode of the Informally Honest Podcast. We are normally four brothers, but today we are joined by the lovely and the wifey of Brother Johnson, Miss. Uh, do you refer? Uh, do you prefer a bail or kiss? A bail. A bail. I'll take a bail. Yeah, yeah. Dopeness. We're joined by Miss Abel J, and I'm just adding that last part on. It's not a part of her uh, uh, professional reference, right? Uh, <laughs> but we are glad to be joined by her. She is uh, Adam's lovely wife, and she is a brilliant artist all on her own with photography and videography. Appreciate it. So thank you for joining us today, Abel. How are you feeling? I feel good. I feel really good. Um, also, just wanted to say it's really awesome to be here. I watch, like, every time it's updated, I instantly click on the podcast, and I usually do it, like, while I'm editing and mm. listening to it, and I love it. It's great. Appreciate that so yeah. much. Oh. Yeah, no, of course. It's oh, great. Yes. But I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. got my tea, and yeah, I'm good. Excellent. Yeah. I guess it's your first time joining us here on the Inform the Odds podcast. We have um, we have ample conversations. Pretty much every, pretty much that's our entire uh, platform is having conversations mm-hmm. uh, with each other, <laughs> where we challenge each other, we laugh, we joke, we uh, we give opposing feelings, some good, some bad, some indifferent. And I haven't cried I, yet, but you know, coming soon. <laughs> I I hope <laughs> that we have some emotionally deep ass episode where none of us cry because. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's 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 just it's it's clearly just heart wrenching. But all of us are under the clear um, uh, state of mind that if you cry on the internet, that shit lives forever, and you should never. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with crying. Cry. Uh, in great words of a uh, little real Howry on his first comedy special, would you cry? But uh, <laughs> but uh, never cry on the internet because no, I do not want to become a sound on TikTok. Uh, for that, <laughs> not for that anyway. Okay. Um, There's no way I could be in the middle of these four pictures. No, no it's like, impossible. Damn. Let that go. I'll figure out which one you want. <laughs> you want people block to them see. out. <laughs> uh, at the at the base of, at the the crux of every conversation uh, that we have, uh, we pride ourselves on three principles, and that is being forthright, being vulnerable, and most of all, be honest. Mm-hmm. So as we start every podcast uh, in our more recent times, uh, without without so much rambling, <laughs> uh, <laughs> fellas, in those three principles and milady, did you have anything this week that uh, that you feel like you applied being forthright, being vulnerable, and or honest? I can. I'm gonna say this. I can only say that I can't think of anything. Uh, so I'm just put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. All right, I got some. I'm, yeah, I'm go ahead. Josh. Josh. Okay. Uh, I got a quick one from from this with this week and a quick one from last week. Both funny. Uh, so one more so involved my girl than me, but uh, she went to get like the CVS or Walgreens to get a prescription for her father, her actual father. And she so used to calling me daddy. She so used to calling me daddy that when she went up to the uh, window <laughs> and, they, and they asked her, OK, so the last thing we need is your, we need some information from your father. Uh, what's his uh, what was his birth date? She gave them mine. <laughs> <laughs> and that was her first instinct was to give them mine. <laughs> and they were like, they were like uh, I mean, it's kind of young, but I guess we'll go with it. Are you sure? Are you, are you sure it's, you sure it's 89? You sure? <laughs> So I have so many like follow up questions for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moving what? right along, moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the one that happened last week, though, Nat and I were in the car on our way back, on our way home from Whole Foods. I don't know if this happens as frequently in, in Chicago, like another bigger city, but people are still using these scooters quite often, and like they'll they'll just fucking run right in front of you. Uh, and while you're driving in the middle of the road, like sometimes it gets definitely gets reckless. 
I drive for a living and on my route, I've seen people on a scooter driving up the wrong way <laughs> on an exit ramp onto the highway. And I'm like, dog, but <laughs> honestly, honestly, on the scooter, I'm like, bro, That's the shoulder weird. doesn't last that long. The shoulder <laughs> on the highway does not last that long. I don't I don't know what his intentions were, but hilarious. What happens if it dies? <laughs> bro, I'm like, <laughs> come on. So anyway, the funny part is so typically it'll be like six or seven of them. And these guys are like young, right? So just mm-hmm. and, and one of them who I had the interaction with was probably like six or seven years old. So it's like maybe seven or eight of them. And they're we're going, let's just say north, right? And they're coming. They're coming south and they begin to swerve into our lane and like all of them but one cut us off and it's like i'm in a it's, it's a two-lane road so they cut us off and then the other one so we come to like a little halt and the the the, the, the littlest one of the group continues coming towards the car and, and i'm like yo he's about to hit us so i yell out the window bro what are you doing stop bro what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> he swears the last minute, no joke, like I, no joke. He sort of swears the last minute, and he yells out, "I'm finna hit your shit." That's what I'm doing. <laughs> what? I, I, I looked, I looked at, I looked at Matt, and we start, yeah, we start cracking up. I was, I was frustrated, but like actually cracking up at the same time. She handled it better than me. Actually, she was like, "Yo, just chill out." And I was like, "Yo, no, he's about to hit us, y'all." I don't know nah. what, what, the, what those scooters can do to the car, but. Right. I know. I know, yo. The funniest part is the little dude. He was he was so gangster with it, yo. I, was, I couldn't even be mad at him. But in real life, yeah. I can't act like that's not some shit that either we would have said or heard <laughs> when we yeah. were younger. Yeah, I would. Man. I don't know if I would have said that shit like six years old. But like, <laughs> no joke, dude. Like he's, he's just riding around there, like in the middle. Of, I was more so. Cons- this dude is six or seven years old oncoming traffic like that's a sure way for your young ass to get hit i just don't know if his his hand-eye coordination is up to par to be going <laughs> to oncoming traffic at you know at that age but the funniest part i'm like freaking out like yo what are you at the bro what are you doing dude i'm finna hit your shit that's what i'm doing <laughs> he just like rides off he just rides off no joke man in, in the same way that like a kid going to going toward the uh electrical socket with a fork you gotta let the kids yeah. learn sometimes. <laughs> don't don't hit them head on, but just like get yeah. in front of them so like they run into you. And, and like, it was yeah, like <laughs> this, how, yeah. this is how this is what happens when you meet an immovable object. Yeah, bro. <laughs> that was yeah. that was a that was a very vulnerable moment for me, man. But the, they all lived, all is well. <laughs> but uh, that was too funny not to not to mention on here. That, that's that's great. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Uh, now back to this daddy conversation. So uh, <laughs> no, no, no. We'll say we'll say that for another episode. Uh, Kirsten, did you have anything? Um, I tried to think about this. Um, I don't I don't know if there's anything. I feel like kind of every day there's probably some small level of vulnerability or honesty. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's really anything that. Uh, that stands out. I mean, I guess I would say like in general, I think I'm a lot better at saying how I feel in the moment, which I guess is vulnerable. Mm. I know a lot yep. of times people Damn save face. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the time people, uh, they save face, you know, just like I'm good. I'm okay. And I just find more comfort in just being like, I know it'll pass. So why not just mm-hmm. say how you feel in the moment versus making other people comfortable or right. don't want them to be concerned, you know? Um, so I guess vulnerable in that sense, like if I'm in a bad mood, I know mm. it's temporary, but um, I think it like before I it was like very like normal for me to just say, I'm fine. I'm okay. Where now it's just a lot more liberating to just be like, yeah, I'm just not in a good mood right now. I'm fine. Yeah. Just not, like, we know, don't so. have to make a big deal out of it, but <laughs> exactly. no, I'm not. I don't feel great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That, that, that's, okay. that's, uh, that's, that's something you really do learn in adulthood of yeah. um, choosing your truth over people's comfort. Absolutely. So that's that's really that's really great. It's really great. And forgive yeah. me, I said I said Kirsten, and I know. Uh, oh, it can it can change. Uh, I, I know, <laughs> but people people tell me what you know what they want to be preferred and trying yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to be better about that. Yeah, no, no, I appreciate it. <laughs> um, and so, uh, I I can't say I can't say I had anything too uh, remarkable this week, and so, uh, we just we can go ahead and just hop into the cast. Um. 
Uh, shout out to Marcus. Uh, much love to you, brother. We miss you. We hope you're okay. Um, sure. And so uh, today's uh, subjects in which I, we're going to converse about is why we have <laughs> our lovely guest because hey. she uh, wrote into the uh, email, which you can do at informally honest podcast at gmail.com. Uh, yeah, we're talking and- to you and you and you, both <laughs> you, you, right in. <laughs> Come on, be on, on your uh, on your F you white and you and you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we 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 were like, yo, these are great questions, and she's a lo- uh, she's a lovely artist herself, and so. Let's bring her onto the cast, and so we're gonna we're gonna go through these questions that that she posed, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna chop it up together, yeah. and then we'll get into uh, the work that you're doing, and so we can share that with the world as well. Yeah, awesome. And by the world, I mean all lovely twenty eight people of y'all. Someday right. that never gonna get up. Uh, yeah, and, four, and fourteen and fourteen of you on Twitter, man. You know, we and, here. And, in real life, we'll be at 14,000. I'll be like, all right, all 28 of y'all, we still love you. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, so question one, would you consider yourself happy or successful in life? Who wants to take this first? Ooh. I can. Okay. <laughs> so do I consider myself happy or successful? Um, I, cons- I consider myself successful, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, in a sense of su- uh, success for me is, and that's a follow-up question is, uh, what do you define as happiness or success, right? Uh, I consider myself successful because um, being a dancer and, and making sure that all of my lines of income, uh, or at least the majority of them, were dance-based uh, is a goal I set for myself, <clears throat> excuse me, a goal I set for myself uh, right out of high school. And uh, to kind of go against the grain and not immediately go to college and uh, knowing that I, I maybe I would at some point, but not making that as much of a priority, but going like, OK, this is going to be hard. I know I can if, if I devote myself to this, I can find some lane of success with that. And so um, to be able to do that and have had the career that I've had for the past 15, 16 years. Uh, Yes, I, I I think that 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 is successful, and it's not a lucrative field. And so, for me to be in the w- within the monetary comfort that I am, I'm I'm chilling. And so, yeah, I, I I consider that successful. I enjoy what I do. I don't like what I do every day, but I enjoy what I do. Uh, so yeah, I consider myself successful. Happy is relative. Mm-hmm. Um, a colleague of mine. Um, uh, said one day in a rehearsal with uh with my dancers uh for the showcase that I run going. Uh, do you know the difference between happy and joy? He said joy is active, happy is uh, ha- happy is dependent. Mm. You have to you, uh, and so he was like uh, in order to feel happy, you have to be dependent on something making you happy joy you can actively create for yourself and i was I like i also feel like people use um like semantics are a thing sometimes for happy people will use happiness to mean joy right sometimes it's the same way you could say man yo he cute oh no he cute yeah <laughs> i mean he cute he cute but <laughs> is, that, sem- is that semantics or or tone um both there yeah. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Both. I mean, because like you know, there's that there's that old uh, 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 Louis C.K. joke where he was like, you know, your the way we call, the way we refer to Jewish people is also their slur. And he's like, like, oh yeah, he's a Jew. Like, oh, he's a Jew. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, that's that's not necessarily changing the context. It just changes the tone, mm-hmm. which changes the context. Yeah, in this in this case, I think I think both. We're sorry to cut you off, but we're no, no, time. it's not cut off at all. It's a conversation. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, uh, it's a conversation I, that we do cut each other off often, by the way, <laughs> as we should. Uh, so I, I, I think I, I actively try to work for joy daily, but, uh, due to my excuse me, incessant depression, no, I'm not happy. Right. <laughs> That's so real. You say that. I feel that. Um, 
Yeah. Um, well, was that everything you had to say about yeah, it? Yeah, that's not good. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I can relate to that actually. Um, in terms of happiness and joy, um, I find moments of joy very often, I would say on a daily basis, but uh I struggle with depression, um, like actually diagnosed with it and have mm. it. Um, and so happiness, I would say no, <laughs> as I mm-hmm. would agree, but I understand joy and I understand gratitude and appreciation. And Absolutely. I think those types of mindsets anchor you into joy because even if you're feeling sad or you're feeling depressed, there's some, sort of like this conscious awareness of things that you have that are good. And I always have that, um, mm-hmm. you know, like that awareness. So mm-hmm. Um, no, I wouldn't consider myself happy, which I think is okay. I think that needs to be more normalized because I think how you said like happiness and joy sort of being separate um, or can be used separately. I think mm-hmm. a lot of the times people, if you use happiness as an external thing, um, my goodness, you chase that forever, you know, because I don't know if you've heard of like, I think it's called like the hedonic scale or something like that mm-hmm. um, or the hedonic treadmill where basically, especially in our society, like uh, consumer culture that um, we're almost sort of addicted to the idea of chasing or longing, you know? So there's almost this state of everything that you have, you know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? Eventually it just gets, it becomes your baseline. Mm -hmm. And then you're just, so if you, if you have that natural state of mind, you're sort of dissatisfied, you know what I mean? Um, So I think when people seek happiness in their career or in a relationship, or um, they seek these things for, uh, to, to feel happy, it sort of evens itself out and you're like, yeah, I've got that. But now I'm, I'm longing. Something feels like it's missing. So right. I agree with that definition. Um, but joy, I, I feel very often for very like really tiny things, which I think is great because it means you don't need to do a lot, you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, in terms of successful, I would say yes and no. Um, because I guess there's always, uh, more, I guess you can strive for, or you have like a vision for something grander. Um, but I'm doing the work that I love. Um, I think I'm good at it. It brings me joy. I get to connect with people. Um, even online, I've, I've, I've formed a community with people on social media because you can use social media for whatever you want to use it for. But uh, for me, I've connected with other like photographers or videographers from like Italy and Korea. And um, so, I mean, I, I have to define that as success because I think those are sort of the pillars of what success would mean for me. And it's mm-hmm. on a different level now it can enhance, but I would, I would still consider that successful. So. Yes. Oh. Mm. Oh. so Yeah. Well, for me, I'll follow up. Um, so for me, so I, I feel like I'm, I'm blessed enough to say that I don't struggle with any type of like, uh, well, I'm any, blessed. <laughs> mental, uh, <laughs> any, uh, like mental, I don't want to say illness, but, uh, impairments yeah uh like uh uh you 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 don't have any uh uh what's the word i'm looking for i i, I get what you're saying yeah i don't have any tribulations mentally yeah which is great <laughs> by the way which is great by the way it's a very mm-hmm. nice contrast yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um with that being said, yeah. but with that being said i definitely sympathize obviously mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. she does and i i live with her and i see how it affects her and um so I definitely see how it can affect people. Um, so I, I emphasize that. But to, but to answer the question, like, uh, am I happy? I would, I would probably say no as well. Hmm. Um, it's kind of kind of like you were saying. I never thought of the definition that way. Like, because you know, there's a lot of people that want us to believe that. You know, like they always you always hear people say, um, money doesn't money doesn't buy you happiness. But it's like, you know, after hearing your your definition. Or that definition. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, well, yeah, if you it does. You, it kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but joy though, you know, and I never really compared the two words. I just kind of use them interchangeably. Mm-hmm. But um, in that sense, like 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 Kirsten was saying, uh, I can say it. But um, like uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but like she was saying though, um, um, crap. Oh, the joy thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, like she was saying, I would say I'm relatively joyous because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, okay, so I have my my hobbies that I do, you know, maybe mm-hmm. that, maybe I can't do them as much as I would like to, but I, I, I do know that, okay, 
you know, I can work on this, this sculpture thing, you know, on the weekends. Maybe I, I'll make a beat, you know, on Wednesday night or something, just for something random. Mm-hmm. And, they're li- like, and, can- and they're fire too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, that was like, impressing me. What the fuck? <laughs> Do what I can. Um, <laughs> but um, so yeah, it's like I'm not happy, but I feel like, well, let me, let me, if, let me explain. So like, I'm not, but at the same time, I'm not. The opposite. Not, yeah, no, yeah. I don't hate my yeah. life at all. It's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm. Tr- for me, like, I want to get to a place where I can enjoy the weekdays as much as the weekends that to mm. me that's what happiness is to me or yeah. joy or and i'll say yeah. happiness it's so yeah. like and there's some people that you know struggle and crawl through the week just to get to the weekend it's like man do i really want to like do i really want to only enjoy you know whatever that percentage of you know do i really want to enjoy just two days out of seven like that's like that doesn't seem like yeah a way to live so when i get to that place or even or even half a week say yeah. i like really uh, say i like monday through wednesday as much as i love the weekend sure i'll take that too <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah but yeah that, that's that's my answer <laughs> for happiness can i uh interject before you go on to success i was gonna say um in terms of happiness also like if you talk to people from like other countries the idea of people chasing happiness, like, you know, you have like these, this like self-help section that's like how to be happy, how to Mm -hmm. be a lot of people's attitudes are like, you're a human on earth. Uh, you're not owed that necessarily. I mean, you're owed to, to, to feel okay, you know, but people chase this thing. Like they're kind of almost owed happiness sometimes where it's okay to kind of just accept and move through moments that are just heavier instead mm-hmm. of sort of trying to cover it up as something else. Like if you lose a parent or a loved one or a pet or you're sick, like it's okay to just like not be okay. And it's mm-hmm. different than trying to stay there. But, you know, I think some right. people, they just like always want to feel happy. And it's like, that's just yes. not the human experience. So <laughs> yes, I you think know? part of that is, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it's, it's ideal when you can be in a space where you can feel that, um, you can like just accept that, ha- embrace that Acceptance. heaviness mm-hmm. and then not feel like you owe so much justification for yeah. why you, you know what I'm saying? Oh, what's going on and what's wrong? I've, I've tried to eliminate that as best I can in my relationship, but more even just in my vocabulary, the what's wrong, what's the matter thing. Cause that already, yeah. that once again implies and reassures the person that what you're feeling is wrong or bad. Wrong. And, that's, and that shit's come from such an early age. So now it's more of a, yeah. just know. That whenever you're going through that, I'm here. Whenever you feel comfortable to discuss it or you feel like you need an out external source or whatever, yeah. I'm trying to create the space in myself to respond accordingly. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think that's where a lot of that trying to act happy even when you're not is because you're so you have mm-hmm. to we're so used to having to justify yeah. shit or try to and come you up with be something. Happy. It's like yeah, yeah. yeah like, no, you I'll, should I'll, feel I'll, good all the time. <laughs> it's like Wow. <laughs> and I, and, and, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was. That was. That was really it. That was my gist. Okay. I was, just, just one more thing before uh, before we uh, let Adam, Adam continue. Yeah. Um. I think there seems to be a, a unspoken, or maybe even unconscious, uh, conflation between happiness and satisfaction, mm. where people feel like they can't be happy. Uh. They, they they can't be happy if they're not satisfied and they can't uh it just because uh, they're satisfied if, if they feel satisfied that uh that they i, I have a way to finish the sentence and it's not coming out <laughs> uh take your time to feel satisfaction can be recognized as a degree of happiness mm-hmm. but it doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily mean like oh i'm complete now because i'm satisfied in this moment exactly yeah. Yes, yeah, I think I think I we could take that back to mm-hmm. the whole money money happiness thing. If you are dirt poor and you get fifty thousand dollars, you could you could feel satisfied and a little bit of happiness. You're satisfied, like like you, there's a little bit of happiness from that jump of having nothing to being able to have all your essential needs met. Mm-hmm. If you meet those needs, because you if, often do yeah. find people will get a large amount of money, and then they sort of. Uh, they have no idea how to manage it. In they don't know way. what they're doing with it necessarily. Yes. So then they yeah. just... Yes. So, uh, yeah. But yeah. 
true. But I think the jump from, let's say, 100,000 to 500,000, I don't know if that's necessarily bringing that much happiness or, I mean, you, you, yeah. once your, once your needs are met for sure, that's mm-hmm. a guaranteed thing. You have everything you actually need. I don't know if your wants are as easily satisfied because there's, there's so yeah. much more out there. There's always more out there. There's always somebody who has more. There's always somebody who's but, created something better. Or, but the, the, the reason why I do feel like that, that, uh, Money can buy happiness and joy, uh, can, can buy you the re uh, what's this? What's, what am I trying to say? It money can provide it's the, like a tool. Opportu- uh, the opportunity to create joy. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, and so it's that thing of you can, you can buy happiness because you're like, oh, my, my needs are met. And so now I just have money and space to do anything. Yeah. I can be a philanthropist, I can go. I'm like, yeah, oh, I'm okay. gonna go, you know, explore the Swiss Alps. Now I have ease and freedom. And, and freedom okay. and ease All of right. mind can be that satisfactory state of happiness that what, 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 whatever people are looking for. The I issue, see, I see where the right. disconnect. I see where it is there. I'm not necessarily the one who think that joy is created. I think joy is just an expression of what. Yes, it's sure. an expression. So it, it, it brings this, out this, the this, expression. This, that's 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 where. You and I can agree, but I think to say you take me to the Swiss Alps and it's the one thing I've wanted my whole life is to visit the Swiss Alps. I'm just expressing joy. It's not yeah. being created. And, it's a, and I, that's so I agree. With you. I see, I and I'm, and I'm, I'm not saying even that definition that I was going through uh, is the end all be all. Um, yeah, yeah. But more so like. Ha- having financial freedom gives you gives you the space to be able to go, oh, now I don't have now. uh uh the woes that I, the woes that I may have known my entire life, don't exist anymore. Yeah. That doesn't mean yeah. that new ones don't come along. Oh, for but sure. Now, now yeah. I can have some ease because what I've always associated with challenge and tribulation mm-hmm. are now irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that uh, <laughs> I agree, man. This is about to be much longer conversation than these than. Most definitely, we go. I'm gonna show them so Adam can finish his song. Oh, yeah, let me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, like, I mean, I, I guess success kind of for me at least, it kind of plays into the same thing I said about happiness is mm. when, like, when I can wake up and essentially pay my bills with money in which I've gained from doing something that I enjoy doing. Mm. So to me, that's success. Um, but at the same time, I don't necessarily want to be scraping by either. Mm-hmm. But like for me, I'm not there's there's not necessarily a goal for me to be like to make six figures or or be like a millionaire or anything. Now, if if I there if there's were, were decisions that I made that led to that, I wouldn't I wouldn't reject it. But it's yeah. like it's not necessarily like a goal, like I want to be rich or I want to feel that yeah, you know, I wanna have a yeah seven bedroom, you know, five bed <laughs> your bar is not set right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think I read something or heard something. I don't know. Uh, something came. Something reached my consciousness. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that said something along the lines of like. After you make or they say that seventy five thousand yeah. dollars a year in, in a household. They were saying that. Um, typically after that, your happiness level doesn't really like Aaron was saying, like the diff- like the difference between someone making one hundred grand versus half a million it's like there's not much change in happiness i also heard someone say that you know it's not like rich people don't get sad or obviously we, we know right. that's not true but it's like right. they said something online lines that um money just it, it allows you to be m- miserable but in comfort <laughs> absolutely <Yeah. laughs> you can Especially like hide that shit yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and if you look at all the fame not all the famous people if you look at a lot of celebrities that and no Kirsten could speak a lot on that. Uh, yeah, uh, I love, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, there's, there's a lot of, we know there's a lot of celebrities that, that you see in the photos and on mm-hmm. Instagram that are, apparently living a great life, but then, you know, peel back the cover. You know, this person is struggling with, struggling with, yeah, all types of addictions and mm-hmm. depression, yeah. and, and they kill themselves. And I was about so to say, if you, like that. if you peel back the covers, you see me. 
<laughs> with, with, uh, with the yeah, with the with the Paris Hilton. So who knows? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Paris Hilton. <laughs> of all the people. Anyway, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, man. <laughs> sorry, Adam, man. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I mean that's I mean that's just it. It's like so for me, yeah. So that's my answer. So for me, success is just being able to to wake up every day and not think, dang, mm-hmm. I don't want to do this. And that's yeah. like that's so many yeah. mornings. That's been like my mentality. It's like. Mm. Here we go. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah. Me too. Me too, man. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, um, you know, I don't want to stay too long on the, the subject, but I'll just add really quickly. There's um, a documentary. I think I told you about it, Adam, but it's like called, I think it's just called Happiness or something mm-hmm. like that, or the Happiness Project on Netflix. Um, but they basically, I don't know how they use this metric. I don't know how they actually measure this, but they something that was valid for the documentary, but, um, they like compared the happiness levels of like a group of people in like the certain part of India, where when Mm. you look at their day-to-day life, they are like, they, like some people are literally like, this sounds so miserable to me, but they're like, literally like, um, a human taxi, like wheelbarrow, like, Mm. like, yeah walking you uh, know. rickshaw rickshaw drivers whatever. Yeah, yeah yeah um as the only job may be available and then they you know you look at maybe like the the housing structure and it's i mean obviously to us it's just so different like whoa like and you know people are always like you know voyeuristically like well you know i'm i, I guess i do appreciate what i have blah 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 but so anyway they they compared that metric of happiness someone that physically has to like pound their body like you know day after day to barely yeah i guess that was wrong terms <laughs> <laughs> look i was gonna keep a straight face until somebody else says i was gonna keep a straight face whatever why are you gonna let that pass i see <laughs> um overuse their body um to uh i mean to make barely enough to survive so like um So Mm. them being able to feed their families, et cetera. So anyway, they compared it to like somebody in like a high rise office in like New York city and their levels of happiness were the same. Mm. So it goes to show you that I think with us, I think there is something to like aspiring to too much because then you kind of surpass all the human levels. Like you don't need to surpass so many levels. Like people, I think sometimes are like, man, I need the mansion and the car. And they're like working themselves to fill these things. And they're Mm -hmm. using so much of their mental and physical energy to like achieve these things. When the reality is that like, as humans, um, we just really just need success. I think is kind of along the lines of just like community and family and, and personal values being fulfilled, however. And so when you know that that man in india he's struggling but he also has this baseline of like i'm feeding my family and i'm mm-hmm. glad that i can do that and i just thought that was interesting that that was comparable to someone in a high rise building that has you know his issues are now psychological whereas the man in india are are real issues so he can't mull over those things like what's my purpose and what kind of house do i you know his mind isn't even shifted into that mode of thinking you know Whereas we, when our needs are, are met or we do have certain things that are, we don't even ha- have to really think about, like, we know we're going to eat basically. We're not, you know, we're not like thinking that hard about like, are we going to eat today? Whereas right. this guy is running around, like I have to feed my family. And I just thought that was interesting that their level of happiness was like whatever test they used was measured as equal. So yeah. I think there's something to that too. Hmm. That's really cool. And, mm-hmm. I, and I think it's interesting too, that like, whether you even when you compare those two extremes, neither one of them really knows what's going to happen in the next moment, mm-hmm. you know. And it just like I, I've caught myself like because I do the same thing. Like okay, I after work, I know or air quotes, I know when I get home, I got this in the fridge. I'm about to make this and eat, but mm-hmm. I don't know what's going to happen from the drive to my to work to home. Actually, I have no fucking clue. It could be right. my last drive, mm-hmm. you know. That is the assumption that we all kind of live under is you don't know you, what's going on. Yeah. You don't you really. don't know what's going on, but you expect mm-hmm. w- w- once once you kind of built the the format uh of your life yeah. that you know you're like, oh, this is my daily rigmarole to go through. Yeah. Then excuse me, then uh then you're like, okay, well, if anything new happens in there, then it's it's now a, a thing I gotta manage, but it's not a thing I'm gonna expect. Yeah, yeah it, it throws you off because you're so caught in like, I ex- I know what this is. I, I figured this out. I expected mm-hmm. 
as opposed to like, no, you don't. Perhaps if we were like, no, we actually don't know what's going to happen next. It'd be easier to embrace something new that comes in because it's not so like, oh, shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's real. But um, you know. but yeah. A-Dub, we on you. Yes. Um, Happy try success. To, try to be as concise as possible. It's very <laughs> important. <laughs> Looking at... <laughs> Looking at the time left, as concise as possible. <laughs> concise as possible. Um, success first. Uh, doesn't matter. Uh, I think happiness is first. Uh, let's go with happiness first. No, I think we. Can, I guess we can all agree on that. <laughs> um, Nobody's happy. <laughs> no, but I mean, if you look at it from a practical sense, though, what's expected? I'm. I have a wonderful girlfriend. The place I love. The place that I live in. Um, I have enough money to get by and live a lifestyle where you know we go out we're we're able to do most of the things that we want to do some things take a little bit longer perhaps you got to save and i'm still able to save for whatever future the investments or whatever the hell you want to call it you know Mm -hmm. so if you look at it like that perhaps i should be um but as of late i can i definitely have been putting more value on the awareness, my awareness of things that takes up most of my, that takes, that's a large portion of the value. So how I'm looking at it is more of a, if happiness is there, if joy is there, if depression is there, if this is there, I care more about my awareness of it. And these things are just coming I'm willing to, it's easier for me to embrace whatever the fuck is there and say it and say it has to be this or that or that. No, I just want to be, I just want to be there for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's yes. where I've put most of my, that's where most of my value goes. And it, it's, it's easier to embrace those things. And it's less of a, this has to be here. This has to be there. This expectation is just more, how aware can I be? And then when the depression or whatever comes or the sadness or frustration finds its way there. Um, it doesn't always have as much of a hold on me as it used to. I feel like there's a little bit of space there because I'm able to like, there's a there's a viewing of it. There's like a little space in between. Uh, that's as accurate as I can say it and be concise. So that's where the value is mainly placed. Mm-hmm. Success wise, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do I hate my job? No. Do I find value? Actually, the reason why I chose this job but one of the main reasons and the job before that is because no one had to convince me that this job that I'm doing is useful on the planet. You don't have mm-hmm. to give me marketing tools and all this shit to influence me that this is useful for not just myself on the planet. It is, it's blatant. So um, in that regard, I guess I could say success in that way of, am I, I'm outside, I enjoy being outside. Am I doing something that's useful on the planet? Yes. However, do I have a natural liking for it? Whereas I would have a natural liking for dabbling in the arts in different ways? No, I do Mm -hmm. not. Um, But going back to the happiness thing, um, I, it's definitely much more of a, I want that awareness thing to also shift the ideas to like take that wherever. So if I take that in my job, can I be, can I bring some sense of passion or enthusiasm to this job or whatever the fuck I'm doing right now in this moment? I'm I'm not a big proponent to find that one thing you're so passionate about and just do that. No, there's going to be a time where on this planet, something needs to be done that you don't necessarily like or that you're not passionate about. And then you won't be willing to even fucking try. Like, who, you know what I'm saying? Because it's wiser to me to bring passion. To, do your best. I'm doing my best only to bring passion to whatever the fuck is going on or enthusiasm or something. Um, And then I'd be more willing to try new shit and blah, blah, blah. So I guess that's, that's that's double nose for me. (laughs) But optimistic nose, I feel like so. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. More of a, because just because it's a no doesn't, uh, doesn't mean it's negative either. Exactly. Oh, very true. Very Mm -hmm. true. Um, I think yeah. that was as concise as I've ever been, you know? God yeah, damn. probably. That, that was wow. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I don't even have notes or nothing, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, on that note, let's jump into the 
let's jump into the deep end. Uh, <laughs> now, this is where I need to pull out my notebook. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, which uh, I, I've been taught most of my life. Consumed all the way. The, the deep end <laughs> has never been uh, that deep for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Unless, unless you talk about like a 10 foot side. Uh, in the wave pool at, at uh, uh, deep river, deep river, deep river, <laughs> yes, tube and Tuesdays, baby. What's up? Yeah. Where some people still swim, where some people still swim when it's like 70 degrees outside. <laughs> I worked yeah. there as a lifeguard and we had to be there, and it would be like a, a random, it was open, but it was like a 70 degree day. And I'm like, yeah, why are you swimming? But is that okay. is that cold for that? Yeah, because yeah. it was like, cl- you know, I feel like when you swim, you want it to be kind of hot because when you come out the water, right, it, was, yeah. it was cloudy. It was like, a, yeah. it was nice, oh, but okay. it was like, you know, yeah. they were like, there was like two families. They're just like, I'm like, okay. Yeah. 70 yeah. is nice yeah. to take a walk. You know, it's nice to be outside at 70, but not in the water. Not in the water. Yeah. 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 That yeah, wind hits you. Woo. So you know, some people, do, some people don't feel, don't feel cold, like how we feel cold. <laughs> that's that's uh, accurate. I, I gotta I, say I, though, too, that's that's true. Uh, yo, since I've been down here in the south, I'm turning into a little softy, yo. I'm turning <laughs> a bit into a softy. Like, ain't nothing like the go from Mexico. That shit warm as hell. <laughs> I know? mean, it's nice. I'll I'll always point out um uh a childhood memory of ours, Ken uh uh Aaron's uncle. <laughs> Uh, Ken, Ken built a half pipe and nothing but a beater and some basketball shorts. <laughs> like it wasn't negative fifteen degrees. Outside. It was. It was. It was the week. <laughs> it was the week of Thanksgiving. He, he, yeah. he walked. He walked outside like he was going to play a pickup game. <laughs> <laughs> and Adam and I, which we have to mention, snuck into the principal's office and stole our fucking boards back, plus <laughs> seven other things of other people who had requests <laughs> <laughs> while we were going. That's, that's hilarious. That was, that was People's great. duffel bags, a little Debbie snack. <laughs> <and, laughs> <laughs> on deck. Yeah, man. Uh, and Mr. S- Mr. Sutton saw us walking out like, what are you doing? And he was like, get away from me right now. Hurry up before a camera sees us. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. That's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a real teacher for you. That's right? what I was going to say. Shout out. Like, I'm not snitching. Just make sure I don't get caught. Today. Get away. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Period. That's um, but yo, um, question number two: What are your thoughts slash beliefs on God, <laughs> a higher power, or spirituality? Yes, um, I can start it off just to be because I'm mine's pretty. I would say pretty short. Um, I am agnostic. I don't presume to know a lot of stuff. I mean, even information. I was going to ask, what does that mean? Because I don't know. I don't. Agnostic? I've never actually known that compared. I know. Yeah. Um, what is what what what's the one that doesn't believe in God? Atheist. What's the, atheist. atheist. Yeah. I never knew agnostic what it actually. Means. Okay. Well, here's how I look at it. If you look at someone that believes in God and then someone that doesn't believe in God, they're both belief systems, nonetheless. Agreed. That cannot be proved or disproved technically. So, me being agnostic is just like I don't have enough data for that. I really don't. I, I really don't. I mean, I guess I could and then make a valid point. But when it's something as deep as like that. In terms of creation, I know there's like the Big Bang Theory. And I mean, you can use all these scientific terms and do all the research and the data and accept someone's research. And it, you still don't really know. You're accepting someone else kind of going into that field and providing that. But mm-hmm. for myself, I don't know that to be true either way. Um, Got you. Because there's just too many religions that exist in the world. You right. know, people having that mentality of like, you know, with Christianity, it's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, if you're not specifically this, then you're going to go to hell. And it's like, so right. someone born in China that has no access to Christianity, my mind just goes there. And I'm like, I, I, I can't buy what you're selling on that level. Um, mm. but in terms of just like spirituality, um, in terms of things like even you see in the animal world, just like that intuition when there's fear or danger or a mother's instinctive love for her. And I, I think there's just, there's some sort of natural, thing that exists outside of the appearance of the body, you know, and you can call that intuition, fear, a hunch. Um, and these, these are kind of harder to convince people of. Sometimes you feel something and you can't be like, this is why I felt this way, Mm -hmm. but it's so true for you and you can rely on it time and time again. So I I look at it like that. I, um, I don't believe in anything that you can label. Like, for example, I'll say it quickly. This is a highlighter. My definition, but we're so used to a highlighter, like the the name of it. But this mm-hmm. is not; it's it's material 
you know, so when people label things yeah. like God and Jesus and religion, they're so steadfast on the, the, the terms. And that's where I get lost. Um, and people hold on to that, you mm-hmm. know, um, even outside of religion, like vegan, like that's great. But some people like that's their who they are. You know, I am. You should have been, you should have been a part of our podcast last week. We're talking about identity and labels and all that. I'm mm-hmm. sure. You, oh, yeah. No, life. that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's real. Um, yeah. so yeah, that's, but that's my short answer. I think I'm a spiritual person. And I say that because I, a lot of the choices that I make in life are based on an inner feeling that is not, I could not explain on this podcast, but it's, it's led me out of situations. It's led me mm-hmm. to situations I've, uh, manifested, so to speak, meaning I don't know what that means, but I've, mm-hmm. I've had positive thought about something and I visualize something and that's changed something in my brain. And it's allowed different, there's something about that, that I can't, that I maybe would identify as spiritual to some degree outside of that. I don't presume to know. And that's, that's, that's my answer. I don't know. How could I know? I don't know. People that say they know it's like, that might be true for you, but right. I don't know how people can say that as like a, a full, and, and I've had family yeah. members very upset <laughs> about that. Like, oh, you're not a Christian. So you, and they'll literally say it like that. So you don't believe that Jesus died for your sins. I'm like, I mean, you're putting it like that. I mean, it sounds weird to say no, but there's so much shame around that. And that's just, uh, that's a weird world, you know, because mm-hmm. instantly they, they hold you to like, it's, it's one thing to be like, I have a difference of opinion of this person. And then it's another thing when your family's looking at you, like you're wrong, you're going to hell. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. harsh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To you know what? Like that. <laughs> that's really tough. You bring up a really good point. Like, how could you know? Like I'm, I'm thinking of what could be a measurement stick that we could use objectively to say, oh, this person knows or at least knows a little bit more, mm-hmm. at, least, yeah. at least a little bit. What value of measure, unit of measure could be used <laughs> to, to, um, I don't know why, why the imagery of it, just like, oh, this is my belief yardstick. Like it's just. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, what, 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 what unit of measure could we use to be like objectively this person knows something yeah. or a little bit more than that person or they know mm-hmm. something of what they're saying and the only thing I could think of would be them creating methods or tools mm-hmm. that other people try out and it actually works for them based on yeah. where they say they yeah. want to go it actually works objectively yeah. and you can see that and say oh he yeah. said this would bring about more ease or whatever and we a million people have done it and at least mm-hmm. Half of five hundred thousand have found success mm-hmm. in that exact field in, in that thing. I don't see how else you could be like, okay, that person knows what they're talking about. Or yeah, without, and there's several right, versions yeah. of that. That's the thing too. Like yeah. that can work. Like you can measure that, and that can be true. But it's yeah. the same with diets, <clears throat> right? Like some people, what do they do? Keto, vegan, vegetarian, and everyone's like, well, this works for me, and I lost all this weight. But there's based on where so they say many... they want to go. Yeah, based on where they say they want to go. It's like yeah. where they. You know, and everyone's body is different. Yeah. Not everybody, not yeah. everybody can healthily be vegan. Not no. everybody can healthily be plant based. Not everybody can healthily <laughs> be keto. Like you got to figure out what works for you. Exactly. Yeah, but I'd argue that almost everybody wants a sense of ease in their life, or wants sure. to eliminate misery or something in their life. So, no, if, no, if I don't think if, anyone's out there like, man, I have not had enough misery today. Like you know, <laughs> yes, yo, they're not saying that, but they're living like that. Because people are irresponsible is something. Those nineties bands. So, but um, bands. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. That that would be. I would imagine that would be the only. You know, if we all agree that mm-hmm. people want to eliminate more ease in their life and they want to eliminate the miseries or to at least as best as they can, yeah. if this tool that has been offered does that to some degree, then the house like that's the only other way. Yeah. I, I, I think I that's know. idea. I think that's idealism. Uh, to to believe that everyone i think a large majority probably do want to experience that i do think that that you know masochists exist in the world there's some sociopaths who, so uh, i think that shit's all mind stuff though so or you can and you can go on what isn't well every, every I, thought of religion or th- th- like it's all this is where the conversation people. takes a this is where it gets tough <laughs> for me <laughs> because part of me in my experience could tell you what it is but then it just doesn't it, 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 this this is where Josh and I spend three hours <laughs> going back and forth because I can only speak from an ex- like you said we're only speaking from an experience. It of course, you know. So, um, if 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 I can take the take the next one, um, what are my thoughts on all of it? Uh, yes. 
who Jesus, that'll take forever. Um, <laughs> the short and sweet version. <laughs> the, sh- the, the shortest way, the shortest way I can talk about this is always why the fuck does anyone care? That's real. Uh, and, and, and I only say that from the perspective of mm-hmm. I personally um, challenge anyone who makes their decisions based on what they think will happen when they die. Fear almost too. It's, 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 yeah. it's always, it's always a fear of what's going to happen yeah. when I die. And I have always, no clue what happens. You have no death. fucking clue. No clue. I yeah. keep, exactly. I, that's a that's the main thing I always go is like okay we could we could get into all what the research is of what it is now and all of that kind of stuff mm-hmm. but if you need a consequence to be a good person that is the issue for me I I feel that if, yeah. if you if you need consequences in order to keep you in line with making good decisions being a good person to other people and being considerate and empathetic and all of that kind of yeah. stuff then that says way more about you than yeah. whatever your beliefs are. It's like a power dynamic to a degree. Like there's some kind of level of like something holding you to that fear. Yeah. You need, yeah. you need someone, you need, you need some omnipotent invisible force to hold you accountable to doing re- good quote unquote. As but opposed on a smaller to just going- scale, we've all done that. I'm sure. I mean, and I'm, scale, I'm, we've I'm all like done something with the expectation of getting something from that. And, and here's the thing, because that's yeah. how karma is. And and and, and I, I'm I'm no I'm no better in that. I, I'm not I'm not trying to say this in like some I'm 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 better in because I I look at karma that way. If bad shit happens to me, I look at that as oh I probably did something fucked up and this is just coming around. And yeah. when good shit happens, I go okay cool. I did enough. I did enough good to combat that. Like it's 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 a it's it's that same idea. Yeah. I don't think karma's holding me. I don't, I don't think karma of uh, as a personified being is holding me accountable. And that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, I think, I, yeah. So we can get into all of that kind of stuff about how, why do you need to give God a dick? Why do you need to get <laughs> uh, like, uh, why do you, why do you need so, uh, some omnipotent invisible force to hold you accountable? The why, commandments. Uh, like, well, uh, yeah. and that's that's even just speaking toward the Christian state. We can get into, you know, uh, we can get into Buddha. We can get into Ganesh. We can get into uh, Muhammad. Why are we arguing about whether or not Jesus was the messenger or Muhammad was the messenger? Did you get the fucking message? Like, it's it's it's, it's all of these it's all of these perspectives that we can go. No, you're right. And there's a thousand and, perspectives and. Half the people talking about those perspectives don't have the experience those perspectives are speaking towards anyway. They're just like, it's just like they have these ideas and thoughts and beliefs from the books or whatever they've read. Yeah. They've been taught and no experience to go with it. Or it they have no a sense. They don't have direct experience, but they have associated experience. Mm-hmm. They Which take, they take something mean- that they've gone through and they try to make it uh, apply to the, to their teachings. Yeah. Which is. <laughs> so weird that humans do that because it goes back to what you're saying like why do people care i think it's weird when you feel some sort of like uh not martyrdom but like just some kind of like uh, i need to 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 do this for for my religion like i need to because everyone people. yeah i'm sorry no go ahead that was all i was saying uh uh everyone is looking for everyone to some degree is looking for purpose yeah and you're trying to find what that is before you out this bitch and so you're like, oh, once I'm out this bitch, what's the consequences of what? No one knows. Ain't not a single motherfucker came back and gone. Let me tell you about this shit. Not one. Yeah. Got so what's uh, over there? <laughs> <laughs> you are a clown. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't get why people put so much stake into that shit. And I, I, yeah. I get it from the perspective of people fear the unknown. They and do. that can that can be a, another conversation about darkness and all of that kind of stuff and what mm-hmm. all qualifies as unknown in which I keep yeah. going. And I, we have feared the unknown. I have definitely had fears of the and unknown. And we, we all have to so some degree. Just, okay, let's yeah. just be straight. So we're having a conversation and being straight. Let's just say we collectively have feared the unknown. Mm-hmm. Could, I'm, not, okay. I'm not saying any of these <laughs> things as if I have not experienced okay. them or been through them. I, yeah. gotcha. That would be okay. mad hypocritical. That's yeah. a good so, thing to say. Okay, yeah, that's the, so. The if, if I if, <laughs> yes, I, I need uh, I needed that disclaimer. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying this from the judgmental place of that. I'm saying once you Clever. get to a once you get to a certain place in your life, a certain age, uh, after a certain amount of experiences, you get to have enough deductive reasoning and critical thinking skills to go. Why the fuck do I care? And, and why do I care to the point of passing judgment toward other people just to that justify part. how I feel? That part. 
And so mm-hmm. that those things is what is what because and I say this as someone who's been in arguments with anywhere from family, like Leo was saying, to random motherfuckers. I almost <laughs> rest, rest. <laughs> uh no, because uh I, I just did this podcast with uh with a homie Lily B. Uh, and me and my girl had stepped out of the podcast studio and then two random white dudes walked up to us and was like, Hey, uh, 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 how you guys doing today? I was like, yo, we cool. Uh, and then they were like, Hey, you mind if we like pray together real quick? I almost punched them in the fucking throat (laughs) because, (laughs) because that was a threat to me. (laughs) Were they saying that because they heard the podcast? They heard the recording? No, no. They they were just standing on the street. They were just standing on the street Uh, and they were like, Hey, uh, do you, you mind like bowing your heads and like praying with us? uh, And I was like, who the fuck are you talking to? (laughs) People don't realize how offensive that can be to someone. And it's not offensive. That's a threat. Yeah. yeah. You asked me to close (laughs) my eyes and like what? That, like that's that's wild to me because one you don't know anything about me and two why would I close my eyes and hold hands with you stranger that's weird that is weird <laughs> that's random I take that as you're trying to rob me <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's so yeah it, it, it is it, <laughs> yeah it, it is it, true like yo what the, yo you just saw you walk in with that new galaxy phone like yo close your eyes. <laughs> hold your like phone we, in your hands close we your just eyes. walked out there to like catch our uber and then you like you say like what yeah. the fuck is wrong with you yeah. and so and so it is that thing for me of you can have you can have your perspectives and they can be your perspectives that's fine there's no judgment in that live your life how you want to live your life as you should but yeah. as soon as as soon as you want your thing to be everyone else's thing yeah and I and I say that as, again, not not speaking out of hypocrisy. When I started being on my like, let me discover myself inside of my own blackness and Kemet this and yada yada yada. Let's spell I E Y E. All of those things, woo man. I I was very much in my fotet bag for for a little <laughs> bit, <laughs> and 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 I was like when I had students and all that, I I I would be in that bag. And then I was like, you know what? I'm saying it, but of course, live your life how you gonna live. <laughs> I'm not saying this to make you believe it. I'm just saying this as opposing information for you to hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Okay. That's and that's, and now I will gently uh, step off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> that's real though. I, I agree with that. Feel, feel the same way. <laughs> All right. So that's the least me. Uh, I like to sit back and absorb. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, okay. So for me, I, I want to talk about the word faith and why it's so dangerous um and it'll it'll tie it'll tie together Uh, oh no doubt i'm already there (laughs) so like so from my understanding the definition of faith man this might even be in the bible maybe maybe i'm making things up but it's something along the lines is believing something that you have no proof of Mm -hmm. okay to me just saying that out loud makes no sense (laughs) <laughs> it's like yeah you know, like if we're just speaking logically so okay say we're not speaking spiritually we're just speaking mm-hmm. logically so you want me to believe something there's there's no proof of so if john comes up to me and say hey man i just bench pressed two thousand pounds i was that's not physically possible for anybody to do but i'm supposed to believe this because i have i have faith that john is telling me the truth mm-hmm. now that's just that's, that's a, just an everyday you know, interact with somebody. So let's mm-hmm. take this into like a church or a mosque or a place of worship. And somebody tells you this event occurred. And it's like, so now because I'm in this spiritual place and I'm no longer in just a general, mm-hmm. I'm not on the street corner. Now I have to use my imagination and believe this simply because I've stepped into this holy place. And it's like, for me that it just screams like, brainwashing to me and it, it it feels like it feels like somebody a long time ago was like man we need to get these people under control so let's 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 threaten them with hell or whatever the the, the equivalent mm-hmm. is in other religions so we're going to threaten them with this so that way you know we can control these people we can have the the women submit to us and do whatever we want and we can treat them like crap but they're not going to leave us because they're too squeaky if because if they do we're going to stone them outside the city because, you know, divorce is frowned upon and all this stuff. So it's like, it, it just feels like now I'm speaking on religion here. So it, it feels like in many religions, it feels like some insecure man at some point is like, 
how how do we control these people? And they mm -hmm. used these ancient writings to do that. Now, with that being said, um, as far as there being a, like a higher power or some people refer to as the universe or mm -hmm. for me, it's like, I'm, I'm not going to say I don't believe in that necessarily. Cause I mean, it does, it does cross my mind. Like, okay, well, how did we get here? And, and you could say big bang, you could say God, you could say a being of some sort, but it's like that it actually, it very is a puzzling thing to think about. Yeah. Absolutely. That I think really don't often. know. Not yeah. experientially, at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, so obviously we got here some way, you know, right. we don't know how. So it's like, I guess you could say. Um, Curious. I, I, I guess I guess I never put a I never put a worry to it because I don't like yeah. terms. So yeah. I just I just say like for people ask me that question. I was like, I don't know. man, And I was like, I don't know that I care. Kind of like what Josh was saying, like, because <laughs> like, yeah, and it's like. After you've been raised in church for so long, and like, and then when you step out and look at it, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just to me, it's it's dangerous to me because you take a kid into that environment, they're gonna believe it. I mean, there, there's very there's very few kids who aren't gonna go into a, a a church, a synagogue, a mosque, insert place of worship. <laughs> like, it's it's very few children that's gonna walk in there and not believe it. So it's like at that point. You know, are you raising your child or are you brainwashing them? And it's like, it's just to me, it's it's quite dangerous because these are the same kids that believe there's a fat dude coming down their chimney to give them gifts every year. So, of course, they're going to believe that Moses parted the Red Sea or Jesus turned water to wine or that he walked mm -hmm. on water or that he fed a bunch of people with some with some fish, two fish. It's mm -hmm. like all that stuff. Bread. Yeah. All that stuff sounds perfectly believable when they believe that when their tea falls out, some fairy gives them money for it. It's like it's in the same realm. It's all it sounds like fantasy. Yeah. In which I in which even like I get when I when I hear those arguments about like Santa and all of that kind of stuff, I go, why, why give this why why give the fat white man the credit you get for the hard money that you the work the, yeah. the work that you yeah. did yeah. to provide for them? Like why why yeah. why give them that credit? What part of their imagination you're like, oh, this is to preserve it? No. Yeah. Have them create their own shit. That's how you get their imagination. And I'm saying this as someone who does not have children. But yeah. yeah. No, we, we feel the same way, though. We, we talk about that all the time. Like, we're not doing the Santa Claus thing or yeah. anything now, like that. With that being said, I'm not going to go out of my way to say that Santa Claus isn't real. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to be like, hey, you ready for Santa this year? That's not going to come out of my mouth. Right. If they so ask like, the question, we will be it's like, is, is Santa coming <laughs> over? Like, no. Nope. Now, if we, they want to, we we get you everything. <laughs> yeah, it's like now if they want to participate in the in the festivities at school, I'm not gonna say don't. That's yeah, sure. I'm not gonna be the Grinch, put it that way. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm not gonna be the Grinch, but I'm also not gonna be, you yeah. know, pro old Saint Nick. It's just like yeah, you're not gonna <laughs> cater to that just because it's normalized, right? Yeah, because I thought it was silly even even when I was a kid. Like I believed in Santa for like a year. Like <laughs> just one year. <laughs> like, like, that like, was it. Like, like, on it. like I was like when I was old enough to understand the concept, and my brother, I'm sure it was my brother, because that's something my brother would do, told me that he wasn't real at like six or seven. I was like, oh, okay. And then I just went on with my life. It was like I was like, yeah, I kind of was kind of skeptical in that anyway. So thanks, <laughs> thanks for confirming that for me. Yeah. Um, so, same right. here that uh um one year me and my brother found all the presents in my mom's closet. <laughs> And we were like, I've had a similar experience. Cool. <laughs> it was like, yeah. oh shit, Mama Santa. It was like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Then, then uh, she wrapped up everything and was like, what did Santa get you? We were like, what did you get us? <laughs> 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 and it was over from there. That is so funny. <laughs> yeah, that I happens. think my aunt knew uh, once we start asking her, could we sleep in the living room next to the tree the night before Christmas? She was like, oh shit, they know. <laughs> they know. <laughs> yeah, they They're know. <laughs> That's, That's funny. But so. I I want to I want to feel like I answered that question. Um, I realized I didn't. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. But yeah, I just want to make sure well, I, I answered that. I think I did. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. Um, what's the the question is? What is your beliefs? What 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 are your what are your feelings on God? Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts and thoughts and beliefs on God, a higher power, and spirituality? Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well. My, I guess I could start with like my idea of spirituality because mm -hmm. I'm, 
I I wasn't <clears throat> I was lucky lucky to, to not have to be raised with the idea of the Bible. I was raised by people who might have been born or grew up in the Bible Belt at some point, mm -hmm. but never with that dogma projected mm -hmm. on me. Um, it was more it, it, it was more of a okay. Here's where we're at in our lives, mm -hmm. and then you can take what you like from that, and then kind of, here's some other shit we can expose you to just see which one you kind of fuck with more, mm -hmm. you know? But my, I guess as of late, my idea of spirituality would be as simple as this, simple and concise as this. Something very simple. So let's say there's a lot of people telling you around, as you grow up, let's say something as practical as the earth being round or flat, right? Since, since we were born, for the most part, there are some flat earthers, but for the most part, we've been taught that the earth is round, right? Since we were like from early on, mm -hmm. at some point in my life, I said, I, tr I trust that it's probably true, but now I'm going to actually look myself. That's how I see spirituality for me. There's a lot of things going on. There might be some truth. There might be some, I don't fucking know. We've all, we all agreed on that, but now I'm going to. I'm going to, I'm now I'm willing to experiment to see what's real for me. That's as simple as the spirituality. However, um, I, I guess my main answer is I agree with just about everybody um, to some degree of everything that's been said here. But I do want to add some little thing in of like, I've had experiences for sure where somebody was hitting me with that dogma of Christianity or, or non-belief. Um, they were hitting me hard with that shit. And I came to some I came to some conclusion that it's still possible somebody could be hitting with that dogma. And it's still possible to find something fruitful underneath it if I because I don't want to also reflect that same. They already have this identity and they're saying, I don't know, they're right. I don't want to hit it with that same shit of there's no part of what they're saying that could be useful or value valuable here. So it is possible to for me to like set aside the dogma that they have and just ask in this moment what they're suggesting will it work can it work to some degree can it be can it fix this challenge right now in this moment and oftentimes i wouldn't even hear the shit because no i just know them that's that's egoic too that's like saying, i just know who they are i've labeled you as this there's no possible way you could get out of that this is who you are to me i've labeled it Whatever you're saying, I'm not even going to acknowledge it. But in this moment, if I can just set that dogma shit aside, they might have the right answer to fix the issue in this moment for sure. So that's my disclaimer. But most of the shit, <laughs> I don't, um, I, I don't fuck with. So I guess the the main answer is I've decided what I'm hearing all this shit. What am I going to do about it? How am I going to get some genuine experience here? Because yeah. I'm hearing a lot of shit. I'm starting to believe stuff, but it doesn't. It's not necessarily fruitful. And I say yeah. I want to be here, where I wish to go is here. It's not taking me there, <laughs> you know. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm setting aside the ex the fact that I grew up with a grandfather who had been experimenting and, and having experiences that I've genuinely been a part of. That I, I was even skeptical with him. In fact, for fifty something years, he'd been practicing meditation. Not he's not some Buddhist or anything. He's just tried it out and it worked for him and then for about 40 years working on people in different capacities or clearing houses of entities or whatever whatever um i would sit with him and i caught myself when i was younger being super interested and like always wanting to hear the stories but the stories became more important than me actually taking my first step into my own experience Right. The story, my mind was just fucking, it was loving it, eating it up so much so that when I would try first to practice meditation, which I, that word in itself is just so many connotations, just sitting down, just sitting, if you're just sitting down doing nothing, it doesn't mean you're thinking, it doesn't mean you're feeling, it doesn't mean you're watching TV, it doesn't mean you, you in a white, you're, you're in a room, white walls, nothing there, nothing to do, nothing to see, nothing, whatever. I had so many expectations from what the experiences that he genuinely had that I cut myself off from having any of my own experiences. 
because I was expecting this shit and it didn't happen until I was able to be like, oh, I need, perhaps it would be helpful if I approach this every single time, knowing that I have no idea what's going to happen next. Yeah. Like as, as if it's the first time to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm trying to like eliminate that influence, mm -hmm. just setting that aside. My own personal experience was I'm hearing all these things from family and the shit's working, doing wonderful things. I'm hearing it from the outside world. I'm hearing all these things. Mm -hmm. But at what point is the story mm -hmm. going to become less important than me actually taking going beyond my fear and taking the step to really see something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that finally happened. So yeah. that's my idea about it all. That's real. Um, yeah. If I could say like 20 second, I guess little, uh, I don't know. Before. Um, I think what people fail to realize too, is that like, it kind of goes into like, I don't care <laughs> because I think what happens is that um, and people experience this all the time. Like when someone feels a certain way or something is true for them, we yeah. don't hold honor to that. You know, it's like, there really is such a thing as something is just true for someone. Right. It's just, it's just real. And so we mm -hmm. use words and labels and, you know, sometimes we're like, well, I've had this experience. And so, man, that's just gotta be all oh, y'all gotta be feeling this. And you could even use drugs as an example. Some people take it and it's just, you know, it's like this beautiful <laughs> spiritual experience. And then some people take it and they're like, and so just even the planet we live on, there's just so many ways the world works with differences of things. Mm. And I just think if people just left it at that, like some people are atheists and they have beautiful lives, yeah. you know? Yeah, so absolutely. it's just like, it all kind of can just coexist and who cares? That's how I look at it. As long as you're not yeah. harming another person, I right. have zero care in the world, as long as it works yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. And I you know, quickly, I want to level with the folks too, and, this, and uh, especially with Josh too, and agree that I have definitely been on my shit where I was just like throwing that shit on people. Um, and I recognized it. So I do want to like say that shit. I want to like level with the folks and, you know, not be on some hypocrisy. And I, think, I was definitely I, on that. However, mm -hmm. I do think it's also possible to connect with somebody's experience of something. So let's say you wish for them to understand where you come from. Oh, absolutely. You, you speak to an experience and then they feel that and they're like, oh, I fuck with that. I get what you're saying. Right. And that can kind of help you set aside any unnecessary belief system because belief doesn't mean you actually experientially know what you're talking about. No, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I. Uh, uh, it was it. It was always it just it got a little less militant is what happened. <laughs> it was always a thing of. Um, just you say a perspective and you're relating it to the moment. Yeah. And however they meet you halfway or don't meet you at all or completely, you know, come in as they are uh, to that moment is where you where you find yourselves. But it, uh, the militancy became in a, you know, like, oh, you know, it's a man because man and woman is men. Plural. Like it was it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so it, it, it was all of that kind of stuff. And to, to concisely. Um, because you know that we bought that concision around here uh uh concisely answer the question because i don't know that i did um uh relationship with god i don't know that god is a sing a singular entity uh mm -hmm. i do have uh, i do believe that i have uh ancestral relations mm -hmm. uh i do believe in karma very uh very hard Same. and um and as far as like spirituality and all of that kind of stuff uh spirit is Spirit is molecular for me. Spirit I feel the same way. Uh, it does. It doesn't exist as a uh, as in it is exists as invisible only because our eyes are not trained to see it. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is very much you know how how the greater part of creation affects me and how I affect it is what my spiritual relationship is. Um, oh. and so yeah. So last on the docket. Madam Abeo, please tell us what you're working on. Please tell us. Oh, yes. Um, well, I'm actually working on uh, 20 projects at once. Uh, Adam, oh and I, Adam and I, I think we both kind of <laughs> do that similarly. Um, not actually 20 projects, but um, one of the ones that I'm um, in the process of kind of writing and creating um, is a documentary um, about Gary, Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, the reason why uh, I even wanted to do that is I'm in the city, so I have direct access to it, which is great. Um, and I, I, they're just, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced it, but I've had quite a few experiences where like people have asked me where I'm from um, and I'll say Gary, Indiana. And then they're just like, oh my God, you're from Scary Gary? And I'm like, what? Literally it's, my whole life. It's insane. <laughs> Is he a bad? They yeah. bring up the music man for whatever reason. <laughs> uh, Michael oh, yeah. Jackson. Gary, Indiana. Um, or, yeah. uh, oh, shout out to um, Gary was mentioned in the Mortal, Mortal Kombat, Kombat movie. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 what? I heard, yeah, I heard about that. I haven't seen yeah. it though. Yeah, I, I do want to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. wow. But yeah, out. yeah. It happens a lot. It happens. I think actually, Adam mentioned this experience when we were in Thailand, and it was like there was like uh, this. Uh, we had like this cooking class, and there was like a, a a group of. I think they were from Michigan, right? Yeah, it was like two girls from Michigan. And here's my takeaway from that experience. I don't know if you had this takeaway, Adam, but when we said we were from the Midwest too, we didn't say the city. Just because they didn't say the city. They were like, we're from Michigan. We're like, oh, yeah, we're from Indiana and just sort of matching their thing. Mm. Um, And then I feel like in order to to have such a confidence to speak about Gary negatively, they just assumed we weren't. And I wonder why they would have assumed that either way. You know, they were just so confident Mm. in saying it. And I'm like, is it because, you know, I'm just making this up in my head, but is it because you just you just knew because we're, uh, you know, well-behaved articulate you know because it mm. contrasted with her thoughts of gary so maybe she felt right. confident in saying that but yeah she was like all i've heard is to like avoid gary or something like that and adam was like with the straightest face like oh we're from gary and her face <laughs> just goes bright red and I, like, <laughs> I felt embarrassed for her just because her reaction you could feel that embarrassment mm. so strongly and his face was just so like flat (laughs) like not giving her anything to bounce off of she was just like staring back at her own shame but anyway um that's what you gotta do that's what you gotta do (laughs) no and he delivers every time it's great i'm just awkwardly laughing like oh yeah we are and adam's just like (laughs) but um more 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 recently um I've seen like on YouTube, it's it's actually kind of disgusting to me, but I've seen like people that do urban exploring. Uh, I've been inside Emerson. I don't know if you guys have long time ago, won't do it again. Um, but you know, they I've have these the videos. Yeah. I, I went, uh, I went um, and like the floor, like the third floor, I think it's the third floor where like the library is the mm-hmm. ground was feeling soft. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go out like this. I'm not going to die in my school, my old school. It's just not, <laughs> That's not how I want that to happen. Like you could feel mm-hmm. the softness of the floor. Like mm. so I'll never do like that. Like it was again. like it was rotting or something. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah. I'm not falling through. Mm-mm. But um, but you just see videos like that where it, it, you know, to me, it's it's valid. I don't think you should hide it or have any sort of shame against against it. There is something intriguing about dilapidated buildings, and there can be a sort of a beauty in it artistically. Um, but th- a lot of it feels very ex exploitative. I don't know if that's a word, but Mm. it feels like exploitation. Yeah. Exploitive. And, um, you know, and then you see like the comment section just filled with all these narratives. And so it just invites when you only paint like one picture of something, it just invites a lot of, uh, conclusions and judgments. And I was like, you know what, I think it would be really cool to show, um, all of that, but dig into the history, not just for other people as sort of like mm-hmm. a counter narrative almost, yeah, but all, yeah, but also kind of just like for myself so that when people are like, oh, you're from Gary, like blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, let me like explain to you, first of all, like why the city is even like, why you're even making a mockery of it, you know, and then mm-hmm. explaining white flight. And I mean, and not even just that, but even things I didn't know, like um, means, I don't know if you guys ever heard of means manner. No, I haven't heard it. I don't know what part of Gary it is, but basically um, during like the still mill, I mean, the still mill's going on, but when blacks and whites like in the 20s, 30s, 40s were working in the still mills, um, what they would do is, you know, they would make housing for blacks more expensive to Mm. keep them, you know, so, so the, so the white, um, they all were making that middle-class income, but the whites were able to get it at whatever, and they would um, you know, say, you know, they would make it more expensive. Um, mm-hmm. so to keep, um, blacks, because when they first came into the city, they were in, they called it like shack town. So they were in what looked like shacks. Mm-hmm. Um, and so 
there was actually a man named Andrew Means, and um, I wrote it down so I didn't forget, but Means uh, Brothers Incorporated became one of the largest Black-owned real estate companies. Um, and it was basically this man, Andrew Means, that had this trade, this skill. He knew how to build homes. And so he built, it's called Means Manor. It's in Gary. All the homes are still intact. And he, and obviously uh, other family members, his brother, um, other, other people that just knew how to build homes, literally mm-hmm. built neighborhoods for black families at an affordable rate to mm. live in that were equal oh. to the standards of um, what the white families had access to. And oh. I think things like that are incredible. So when you're, you're mocking mm. a city, you know, um, for mm. reasons of mock yourself, actually, if you're going to do that. Um, but just, I mean, things like that are just incredible to me. I didn't even know yeah. that. That's, I mean, mm-hmm. to, for, for someone to see um, an issue yeah. like that and say, okay, we're going to just, build this shit ourselves can we mm-hmm. um oh for but, sure oh, okay. for sure. <laughs> have you not heard me cussing this whole time that's true i just oh. i don't still hear it because i'm so used to it yeah uh yeah i did i did a musical about gary way back when for west side yeah. and i that's why i'm like that sounds familiar so that might have been in there mm. it also makes me wonder if uh uh aaron i don't know if you knew jamal but i know adam did I uh, mentioned the same thing. Oh, uh, yeah, Jamal. Yeah. I wonder if they're related. Jamal, if, they're, if they're related, right. If that's oh, yeah, yeah. I knew Jamal. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's real. Okay. That's real. Um, because it was a, it was a dude that lived around the block from us, uh, yeah. named yeah. Jamal Means. Wow. Uh, shout out to him wherever he is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so yeah, that's that's that, that I I love all that fascinating history, and mm-hmm. especially because there's all there's so many dope people who have come out of that city, yes, uh, us included. Ha ha. Uh, that I'm like, it didn't stop at Michael Jackson. It didn't stop at Glenn Robinson. Like it's, 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 it's so many people out here in the industry and whatnot. Some people who are from Gary, but will say they're from Chicago, which. Yeah. (laughs) Or Um, say Miller and it's, it's okay to specify for people that get it, but you know what I'm talking about. The people that. Yeah. Say we're from like, Miller, so we, we say that, but we're not like you know, yeah. we don't say it in uh in opposition to Gary. We're we like, say it oh. in the neighborhood of yeah, in, in regards or to it, being ashamed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, there's even that part of uh that part that's close to Merrillville that they call South Gary. Mm. I, I don't know about that. Yeah, uh, like that part where Glen, uh, it's right between Glen Park and, and, and Merrillville. Uh, like uh, 50, that, like well, oh, like sixty like, first, sixty. Well, six versus like, Maryville. So it's 63rd. Like, yeah, yeah. Maryville starts from 53rd. So probably between 53rd and like 47. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, it's, okay. it's, it's literally like three, four blocks that yeah. they call South Gary so yeah, they can get so that, uh, so that, uh, cause primarily white residents so that they can <laughs> not get, uh, all of the like kind of bullshit legislation that Gary gets. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Because I don't know if they're governed by Gary or by Maryville or if they have their mm-hmm. own like smaller government or whatever, but it's literally just wow. a couple blocks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. Cause I know like when I it's kind of I mean it's sort of off subject, but like I remember sh- doing the shoot with Paul at his church. He goes to mm-hmm. Embassies of Christ, which is on yeah, yeah. Cleveland and like the Ridge Row? No, it's it's a. Uh, oh wait, no, that's the smaller space that embassies has. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, the, yeah, they used to be an off road, but they moved to a bigger building. Okay, it's gotcha. on Cleveland, like 40 something. It's like right on the border of Gary and Maryville, Maryville essentially. And I've drove down there before. I'm like, these houses. Not saying there aren't nice houses in Gary, but I'm saying these houses are like they're a little different. I'm yeah, like, I'm like this is Gary, but then I'm looking around and like everybody's white. I'm like, I've never seen this neighborhood before. Ah, uh, <laughs> so, that's um, crazy. Mm. Probably what, what are you talking about? Mm. No, that's real. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, but yeah, that's, that's my um, intention behind it um, is to educate myself. So it's kind of like going into it as a learning experience for myself, because I just think that narrative is so dangerous, you know, um, to see one side of something and then form an opinion on it. I mean, obviously mm-hmm. we all know that, but um, when you're talking about people that have live and are born and their families come from there um one of my well you know miss mccready carolyn mccready shout out yeah. Carolyn mccready yeah. uh, she, i mean she, she i mean she she hooked it up though she's very knowledgeable and points to resources that validate that knowledge i appreciate that mm. um her her boyfriend 
he's black. Um, and he, his experiences, uh, growing up in Gary, even, um, cause he was, you know, after that time frame, but his experiences growing up were like the snow plow truck didn't come there, you know, to, you know, those parts of like the Miller area, they did, but like, they didn't even get hmm? mm-hmm. said the peace man didn't go there either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I get it. I get it. Deliver, deliver. Yeah. It takes. It always takes me a second. He'll do that, and I'll be like, "What?" But yeah, I got you. Um, but yeah, I mean, just things like that. I think those narratives are just like really dangerous. So it's just like it would just be really cool to like counter argue that and still show the dilapidated buildings and still show that uh, there's nothing to hide from from that. That is a reality. You can't sugarcoat that as something that it's not. But when you see yeah. people in the comment section, just like black people can't keep shit together or all it just it just infuriates me and i think it's great to kind of come from a more neutral place of like let the facts speak for themselves i'm not saying one thing or another but here's just some more information before you um you know just finalize a conclusion like you just see it's just dangerous you can see something someone can go in someone's city with the intention of being like only black people live here primarily and this is all i'm showing you and putting that on the internet, you know, and then you've got like yeah. two, three hundred, four hundred thousand people not realizing that incredibly talented, resilient, uh, beautiful, strong, creative people live here uh, um, and are thriving. Some aren't, obviously, but are thriving despite those inconveniences that have nothing to do with a black person not being able to take care of a city. And right. I think that knowledge just needs to like be just a counter narrative. So yeah, yeah, so, that's great. You're doing this totally documentary will really invite, hopefully invite those converse, those new conversations. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. I hope so. And, and real quick, um, just to add to that, real quick, like also, like you're also you're you're learning and you're doing that, but you're also essentially explaining them how it came that way because white flight is a huge reason why it, the city is what it is now. Absolutely, Absolutely. all those white businesses and families they took their money and went and built Cherville and Maryville, Maryville. Yep. and Portage they mm-hmm. built literally all around Gary which and all was Gary at one point wasn't it yeah. well some of it I know Lake Station okay. was okay. yeah Lake Station yeah. was definitely okay okay but what happens is you know they took their money and they went and built these houses and built, built neighborhoods and all that money now goes to their their school districts because mm-hmm. We, mm-hmm. someone thought it was a good idea to make schools be funded by property tax so mm-hmm. since the average home in Gary, I don't know what the average home home cost in Gary, but some tell me it's really low compared to Sherrillville. Right. Yeah, so sure. we have no money to fund our schools, which is why we can't keep them open. And so and all that stuff stems from white flight, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. White flight and Jim Crow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So I can't I can't wait for you to, to finish that. Because, yeah, that's yeah. great. I can't wait to see that. I'm excited. You know, I'm, just, I'm just curious. I don't know if you can speak about it, but how far along mm-hmm. would you say you are on it? Um, so I don't have any of, sure. it would sound like a lot, actually. I don't have any of like the um, footage or photographs or interviews. Um, <laughs> so that sounds like a lot, but I think the most important part for me, the other parts are actually pretty easy for me to do um, just or organically. How were you going to say? No, but you, you did have the, the one that the, the one lady you talked to. Though. Oh, I did. Yeah. Um, her her name. name is Ruth Needleman. She mm. shout out to Ruth. She was a She's a professor emeritus. I didn't even know what that word was, but it's just like a very revered. It's like a professor that they are retired as a professor, but they retired with like, you were a freaking professor. Like mm-hmm. you did your thing. Like you are, you know, um, and she wrote a book. Okay. Yeah, basically. They retire her jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, and she wrote a book called uh she she worked with um oh what is it called? She just she studied something about like socialism and like the workforce basically. Mm. And so she interviewed the original like committee members that uh that were all black men. And she actually interviewed them that were all black men that uh worked in the steel mill and they all had opposing ways of dealing with uh racism in the workforce so some of them believed that they should start their own organizations like exclusively black like we should have our own organization within this company you know and then some people didn't believe in that like the people she'd interview um they were like no you know we don't need to separate ourselves we need to integrate ourselves uh so you had all these different belief systems and she wrote this book about it and i and i love that she wrote it from that perspective of like too 
you know, th- that even, even, you know, within this, this group of, of individuals that all were experiencing racism in the workforce, they all still had different ways. You know, you could obviously like yeah. take Malcolm X and Martin Luther King as an example, but just that kind of narrative of like, if we separate ourselves, um, that's just more fuel for the fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that other belief of like, we need to, um, there's still nuance. Yeah. That's wonderful. So it's mm-hmm. great. And I've been using, she wrote the book on that. Um, mm. A lot of, she said a lot of white people like IUN style uh, were like, ah, well, those facts aren't true and blah, blah, blah. But she, she interviewed a lot of, 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 of black men and it was all corroborative and was in line and alignment. And um, so I did interview her, but in terms of just writing down the narrative of why I want to do the documentary and how I wanted to break down when I'm going to film and who I want to interview, I want to interview Emersonians. Um, there's different generations. Um, just of people that I've already talked to that are down to just like speak on their experiences. Um, and I also wanted to add that Robert, Robert Knight, everyone knows Robert mm, Knight. Yeah. His great grandmother, she's still alive. They both live in Florida. She's like a hundred, 101. Um, she lives, I don't know if you guys know where Robert used to live, but he lived in Miller. Um, you know, that gas station on Grand, is that Grand? Yeah. Yeah. Grand um, Boulevard. Yeah. And if you yeah. turn right, there's like kind of like houses kind of in the back. Yeah. Um, Chance used to live back there. Okay. Yes. Yeah. He lived, yes. He lived right yeah. across the street from Chris. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So I that... think we call it three I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it was three yeah. 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 Was it? Hmm. Yeah. I completely yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, his great grandmother was the first black resident in the Miller area. Hmm. Wow. So wow. just things like that, you know, and what that experience was like, and she's still alive. And so, you know, it's just things like that. Wow. And I just think that would be That's really, really cool. cool. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Yeah. Wow. Damn. That's really cool. Please keep us posted on that. That's great. I will. That's really, really great. I will. Thank you. Oh, my dog is dreaming. <laughs> Sorry, if you hear something, he's just. It's all good. It's all good. Running through a field. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah you got to interview him. Like, yo, what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that with us. We yeah. sincerely look forward to that project yeah, absolutely. and any of the other work that you have going on. Let us know. We'll be glad to share it on the social media platforms and absolutely you know, pr- yeah. uh, help promote. Uh, yeah. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Informally Honest podcast. Um, this was a really good one. Uh, yeah. Thank you for these wonderful questions, Bell. Um, it's wonderful to have you on. You're very, uh, as always, you're very insightful. And sincerely, sincerely uh, appreciate your presence. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any any sign offs, y'all? Um, I don't have anything to say. I pretty much sure we got back people to share, but I'm not gonna do it this time. <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> uh, yeah, this one was a good one. Yeah. That's my sign off. This was a really good one, man. Yeah, yeah. it was. Um, I, I guess I can cap it off by saying. Uh, I love the podcast and that's, that's no bias. I, every time that I see it like uploaded on like YouTube, I I always listen to it when I'm editing. And I feel like, even though I'm not like talking to you guys, I all find myself like pondering after like a point or being like, Oh, I I wanted to interject that. And I think Mm -hmm. what you guys are doing is like really wonderful um, because I can listen to the entire thing start to finish and feel like kind of like a fly on the wall, but that I'm like talking with friends just about, how people should talk to one another, you know, like mm-hmm. everything. I love that you guys encompass so much. And, uh, you know, I, I know for a fact that it's going to just continue growing and be more successful because all the makings of it are already there. You know, it's great. Yeah. Love it. Appreciate that so much. Sincerely. <laughs> yeah, yeah that was wonderful. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> so if you are moved to interject and want to, <laughs> and, and want to join in the conversation, uh, hashtag join the conversation. <laughs> haven't used that one in a while. Uh, <laughs> please write us at informallyhonestpodcast at gmail.com, just like a bayo did. Or you can yes. comment, like, su- share, subscribe on YouTube. Yes. Review, rate and review on Apple Podcasts so that we can be shared and uh, so we can be shared with others. And by all means, we welcome you to join us. Good, bad, indifferent. Let us know how you feel. Uh, I had um, I had a homie uh, who's very dear to me, tell me that she does not like podcasts and straight up told me like, uh, <laughs> she was like, y'all don't really talk about anything that I care about. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. That's real. And I was like, that's yeah. cool. I don't, I don't take offense to that. I mean, 
you know that's how humans then, work <laughs> yeah, yeah and then she hit me up yeah uh she hit me up two days ago was like hey do y'all like uh do you have full episodes like you put on instagram and i was like yes i've been telling you that since we started <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah since you've been and, telling me you don't care about anything we talk about and then <laughs> and then uh, i sent her the youtube link and she was like i just watched like three episodes straight wow and so mm-hmm. by all means Whatever your process is, we welcome it, people. and we and we just we just we just want to be, you know, we just, we just want to bring you these conversations and hope that you could join in on them. And so, wherever you connect, whoever you connect with, and to the depth that you may connect, we <laughs> encourage you to always be forthright, vulnerable, and motherfucking honest. <laughs> That's right. Peace. Peace out, people. Peace, Bye. y'all. <laughs> Can't look in the eyes of my brother <laughs> Without shedding a tear for my brother I really want to try for my brother Cause I truly do feel for my brother